Results in the first round, Rupert, were just yep. insane. Some stunning rugby played, and Japan was absolutely one of those, only missing out to Great Britain by two <laughs> points. We saw the heartbreak, but I think they can hold their heads high and come into this match facing Argentina with, with a lot of pride. So, yeah, Japan in their blue shirts. Get us underway here. This is the second round of matches in the men's competition. It'll be a, an Argentina line-out to get us started. There's the man, Maruo. We got two tries against Great Britain. He was full of running. Really good performance for him, and he's earned another start from Simon Amor. And here's, here's the great veteran, Gaston Revol. His 96 all time event. Almost 450 matches in the Sevens World Series. He's 11 years older than anyone else in the team. Extraordinary longevity as they swing it out to a man at the other end of the scale in terms of his career, Marcos Moneta. Herman Schultz now. Iskro's been given a bit of bench time ahead of this one. That ball's gone loose, so a chance for Yako Shiji for Japan to scoop it up here. He's from the Yokohama Cannon Eagles. And just near Tokyo, Latinata Sorajima offloads the ball nicely. And they decide to kick Moneta. He'll gobble that up all day long with his pace. But they get the penalty. It works out for Japan. They're going to go quick here. So Ejima, little pass. But the defense from <laughs> Gonzalez gets up, wins the steal. That looked like a try all money for Maruo. Oh, Gonzalez, get out of here. That was insane. <coughs> Absolute oh, well. try saver. And he's even pointing over to Kurihara, who didn't get up from that last play on Japan's, on the J Japanese side. That's why they were only attacking with six players. You have a look there, they haven't beaten Argentina since 2019. And if you look up the top left of your screen, Argentina are coming second and Japan 16th. As we see, Kurihara doesn't want to come off, but. Yeah, it's absolutely right though, he does so. Recognize and remove. He'll go off, have a head injury assessment, and I'll check him out. He's also holding his wrist, I think. I'm not sure it's actually even a head injury here. Yeah, in those moments in sevens, it happens so fast, adrenaline takes over. But he will be feeling that. Bit of friendly fire, apparently. Very friendly, but the fire's very hot. It's thing sometimes. Okay, so Argentina have cleared their lines up towards halfway. Santiago Villafeld. Hasn't been starting a lot for Argentina of late, just a 22-year-old, but given us responsibility here from Santi Gomez Cora. Alongside the experience here, though, with Revolve throwing the line out to Schiltz. Another vastly experienced player on the series. Here is Vera Fett. Revolve. Girls gold medalists in Hamilton and Vancouver this season. Argentina they come in rank second. Odds on for automatic Olympics is Moneta, Marcos Moneta. Not many people on the circuit score a try like that from that kind of position. <laughs> Nothing on, just the sheer pace and vision to get away from the breakdown of rugby. Hola Moneta, if you blink, you will miss this man. Japanese defence. Blink for a tiny wee second. That gap was a small one, but it's all that guy needs. He has to be one of the fastest men on the series. So slick. We all know what he's capable of off the boot as well. Bang, bang. I need his here to play. One of the fastest men in rugby adventure, Marcus Moneta. Whatever code. That's his first try of the weekend. No doubt there'll be more. 81 coming into the event in just 15 sevens events. He's bit slowed up there, Marcos, after leaping for that ball. He's gone forward a little Second bit of Japanese scrub. Just get a bit of attention here. Oh, he did a great job to get up that height <coughs> over and above everybody off. else. But yeah, he's just stayed down for a moment there. Kick off such an important part of Seven's position is everything. 
and Argentina smile as Manila gets back up. Okay. It will be Japanese ball, and we can confirm that number 14, Kurihara, is not returning to play for safety reasons, probably for the best. And do you like tattoos, Rupert? It's a big year for Argentina. Crouch! It was. Sensational, I remember that. We, uh, Find. The World, FIFA World Cup winning team, Set. Lionel Messi on the uh, on the left calf, who didn't play for River Plate, but I can assure you that Marcos is a huge River Plate fan. <laughs> So he's sharing the love a bit. He wouldn't put Diego on there because Diego Maradona played for Boca Juniors this year. That's just big, big rivals. Different level kind of rivalry. As we've seen sport. 7 0. They lead Japan. 2.50 to go. High tackle, yeah. It could be a further sanction as well. Yeah. Didn't bring it down safely rather than a high tackle. Graziano's well, the man, will sit down. So an opportunity now for Japan with the power play. Graziano on the naughty seat for a couple. Yeah, it's two minutes on the bin, so the team with the number advantage, you have to capitalise. As you see here, Graziano probably didn't mean to put him in so much danger, but he definitely muscled him up just a little bit too much. We don't want any danger in the game. Takes a seat, but Japan now have to capitalise on this. We've seen teams be a number up and, and not score any tries or any points. So Argentina will be looking to stop the stop the momentum of Japan. Absolute athletes. Argentina just provided us with such entertainment, particularly this season. As you can see, sitting second on the table, comfortable position. Looking to have to defend with a man down now. Oh, Big tackle hit. coming in from a Sudzuk, the captain, and Marcos Moneta's onto it. He kicks it forward, but just a little too heavy. It'll go dead. Yeah, a bit frustrated there. Thought he had another one there. Most kicks in play any team this season. Most kicks in play in that man on his screen in particular. Him himself has made the most kicks out of anybody. Over 200 players with 32. Massive hit from his teammate, though. Was well, Zuzuk getting that possession for Manera? He knows what to do. I haven't actually seen him kick a ball dead that often. So he almost Japan. plays rugby like he is playing soccer. It's like a sort of he's brought this yeah. this new style to the game where he puts it on the floor and just keeps dribbling it forward. And yeah. sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But it's uh, it's kind of a new way of playing the sport. It's great to see. Fine. Yeah, when there's no sweeper, it's such a good tactic. And his control, I think he's Set. it's a sign. He's calling out to Messi himself, isn't he? He wants to call up to the Argentina football squad. Yeah. Knowing his uh, skill set, stranger things have happened. Here he is making a tackle. Oh, here's a nice charge from Maruo. Look at him go. There you go. He's the main man for Japan. It's Takamasa Maruo, and that is his third in two games. Third in two games. How good. Maruo was instrumental against Great Britain, and he's proving the same here. Oh, he just caught Manito sleeping on that side of the ruck. Nobody was at post. There were no comms. Argentina were exchanging a couple of words after that one. Beautiful heads up play. There's nothing like scoring a try when there's no post on D. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. He's one of these young players that Simon Amos brought into the program. Just his fifth event, Waseda University. He must be so satisfied to see a project come to fruition like this. What a day he's having. Absolutely. And on such a beautiful competition as the World Rugby World Series. You must have so much physically, lungs, speed, fitness, if aerial skills as he goes up and disrupts the Argentina ball. Yeah, shots brought it down though. His conversion was successful, so 7 each. Will Gonzalez is just throwing Japanese defenders down like sacks of potatoes. And this is all about pace now. Moneta chips through. But Japan get back to save the day. Fox in the red will go to half time. A cracker to get us started in the middle session of the day. Seven each Argentina, Japan.
So there you go. Here's some of the numbers. Pretty even. Nine carries each. Pass is almost identical. And Level are bringing their good stuff. We can go sideline now as we get started for the second half with head coach Simon Amor. Simon, we saw your face after the final play against GB. <laughs> Could have been all so different. How'd you get them up for this one? Uh, um, well, look, I mean, every single game they, they make mistakes, but they learn and get better. And that was just another game where they made a load of mistakes, but they learned and, get, and got better. And we'll probably do the same in this game here. I mean, that's what's happening. But the effort they're putting in is fantastic. And you can just see that there's, you know, there's, there's growth each tournament for them. I mean, they make a lot of mistakes, but they're growing and learning, which is fantastic. Hey, Kia ora, Simon. It's Ruby here. Massive hey, fan of your team and how you're going. I heard you talk, sorry, as Argentina sneaked through there, I heard you talking about the short side mm. versus the open side. Is that a plan against Argentina or all these big guns? No, I mean, it's, I mean the biggest strength the, uh, the Japanese guys have is their footwork and agility around the, the edges and the fringes. So we've got to try and find a way of creating those sort of opportunities for us. And, I mean, Argentina are a tremendous defensive team. So if we play kind of wide and wide against them, they're probably going to get eaten up. So we've got to try and find those short side spaces. That's all it is in this one. And we've got a bit of luck in that first half. Talk to me uh, about the big man, Takamasa Maruo. Three tries this weekend. Yeah, so he's, I mean, he's, he's a guy we found talent's idea at the start of the year. He's played like no sevens at all. So, I mean, he's just getting better and better. I mean, the fitness is a big issue for him. He's a guy that's played a lot of sevens and heat in Singapore is tough. But, um, yeah, he's getting better. So he's a good one for the future. Well, let's get back to it, Simon. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. And in that break, Argentina scored through no one else other than Gonzalez, who's also taken a rest. And he's on the bench now, but huge output from that man. Got it. So, yeah, that Gonzalez tried 14-7 Argentina. They got the ball in their hands again as well. Started the second half with power. How's that from Osadzuk? He's carried the Japanese defender over the try line. When does Los Pumas skipper not stand up for his team? He's got another one. Far out, Argentina. They've always had speed and skill. Look at the fans, they're loving this. But this season, the physical presence that they are bringing to the World Series, they're just turning into a powerhouse. And Osadzuk, he's a workhorse for this team. And he felt like carrying. His defender over the line, which he did, and that kick is sensational as well. More great coaching from Santi Gomez Cora. Santiago Alvarez, who was the skipper, did an ACL, was out of the game for about 12 or 16 months. Brought him back, could have put him straight back into the captaincy role. He said, no, we've got competition in the squad now. We've got a skipper who's doing well. His name's Matias Osadzuk, and A, you're going to have to get back in the team, Santiago. B, you know, why don't we stick with Osadzuk? And it's just worked out for them so well. Loose ball, Japan onto it. Ah, that'll knock that on the floor. 21-7. No breaks in terms of luck in the second half for Japan. Argentina's kickoff retention proven crucial. That's what the last try from Azuzu came from, and now they get their set piece one. And you're talking about the mighty captain Azuzu. He's such a hard worker. He's top three tackling the entire competition. He's coming third. Gross. That's the kind of kick you want a workhorse Point. you're proud to go into battle with. This Argentina side is just looking so good. Here they are again. La Vagen. That scrum half now to Santiago Villafeld. La Vagen again. He's got a Sudzuk to his right. Moneta looming. He might not need him, a Sudzuk. They put him down eventually. They get it off the deck. They reload so fast, this Argentina team. And then the big bopper, Iskro. Turns up on cue, try stopping that from that kind of range. Wow. They just came flying. It was non stop. The kickoff retention, the scrum, attacking the line for all money. You thought Azutsuk might have been in here. Look at him go, the leg drive. All credit to the Japanese defense, though. And in the end, Eth Brook said, Give me the ball and move out of the way. Vamos, Seth Grohl. Across the entirety of their squad, Argentina are just impressing the world. Yeah. Two tries a tournament on average. Debut Hamilton, 2020. Of course, the tournament they won earlier in the year. 
26-7 now. Argentina looked like they're cruising to a second win of the day. Didn't go their way in Hong Kong last week. They had a tricky tournament. Oh, finishing fifth, that ball's gone loose. Getting wrapped up here on the floor is Okudaira. Japan, as we know, have seen all series despite their position on the rankings. They will keep working, but that's been ripped clear by the beast, Herman Schultz. And Iskodo is going to get another one here. That's just power and contact. Just bully boy stuff from Argentina. And they can look forward to sitting top of Group D. Yeah, another mess of power play. It was Schultz. Makes the tackle over quick as you like, steals it, and the ability for Argentina to react this quickly, and all of them supporting. And you'll see at the end of the, it looked like an Argentina fiesta. They all surrounded Heath Crop and celebrated together. Just depicts the form that they're in. <laughs> Another seven pointer. All these tries are somewhere around the post, which just lays on the points, which grabs momentum and solidifies dominance. And just as I say that, of course, they make a mistake. So Japan will get some much needed position here. We love a milestone in rugby sevens. Almost reaching another one is uh, the Argentina captain, Matias. Sudzuk, who's racked up his 98th in this one. 30 seconds to go here, 35-7. Penalty again at the breakdown. Second half. So there's a Sudzuk standing to his feet there in the bib. You can hear you talking about him, Rupert. But sevens are such long seasons, we, but we travel all around the world. It goes for so long, and it's important to celebrate those milestones. So Yeah, we're two away, so it'll no doubt happen this tournament or next. Iskodo has got two in this game all by himself. We're going to have a, a line out here at 35-7, clocks in the red. The Errol Flynn moustache, I call that one. Time off. Ball. Might be uh, too young to know that reference, but any moustache deserves a good. A bit before reference. your time, to yeah. be fair, <laughs> with you, Errol Flynn. We're talking westerns. We're talking. He, he was Australian, oh, actually, Errol Flynn. Yeah. Oh, big, big. How did he oh, catch that? Did they get that line out out there? <laughs> Extraordinary. We'll have another look at that. Hopefully, Lavagen, Elizal. Some footwork from Elizal. Lavagen. Good support. As you say, Ruby, blink. You miss things in this game. Iskro looking for a hat trick. Just pops it over to Herman Schultz. <laughs> and Schultz with a cherry on top for Argentina. And it's Schultz who's had a great shift this game. But can we just have a look at this? The ability to turn around, hands up, and control it by Iskro. He'll tell you all day that was on purpose. And there he is there, setting up a try for his teammate. In the end, it was a draw and pass for Schultz. Argentina suiting their dominance. A kick out wide if they can slot this one. It'll just show the kind of form that they're in. Quite far out. Oh, beauty. Ballandini right down the middle. And in the end... 42-7 to none other than Argentina.